spring has sprung, so it's time to point out the teams to watch. Everyone's happy to face things off, so celebrate with us as we start to preview the season. And remember, like Morris Day saying, do the bird. Sports Night is next. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Sports Night. I'm Joe Young. And I'm Howie Shapiro. And we're getting things rolling, Joe. We've started some spring sports. The weather's been mostly cooperative. Well, it's, it, it's been fun. It, it, you know, of course, we didn't really have a winter until the no. end of March. Correct. When uh, all the, the spring sports were getting started. And then, uh, yeah, it had all this beautiful weather. All the fields were open. And then we got the biggest snow of the year. So that kind of delayed some things. But uh, very excited to get things going. And we have a lot to talk Damn. about uh, tonight, and uh, we'll get to, to previewing all the teams over the next couple of weeks. But let's get this show rolling. We start with the baseball team. They opened their season last Tuesday, traveling to Centennial to face the Cougars. Centennial was one of the top teams in the conference last year, and they were already off to a 2-0 start. It was a very tough test to get the season underway. They got started the start they wanted did the Cardinals. Jared Fearing had a double in the top of the first, scored on a wild pitch to put the Cardinals on the board first. Unfortunately, the Cougars answered in the home half. Jack D'Agostino with a two-out double, the deep center. Peyton Street scores easily from second, and the game is even at one apiece. Things got out of hand, though, for the Cardinals in the second. Jacob Maddock lost his control, hit three batters, and walked three more in the inning. Cougars scored five runs with just two hits, and all of a sudden it was 6-1. to one. Got even worse in the fifth inning. A couple of weird little jam shots by the Cougars forced the Cardinals to hurry throws. They had three errors in the inning, and that allowed three more runs. Cardinals fall 9-2 in the open. Well, on Thursday, the Cardinals had their home opener, hosting Elk River. The Elks were second in the conference last year and put up nine runs in their opening game win over Anoka. So the, the Cardinals, they would have their hands full once again. Elks catcher Andrew Palm got the game started with a bang. He led off the top of the first with a double over the head of Danny Scheller in center. It was one of only three hits allowed by Jared Fearing in the first six innings. Nice pace hit there. Palms would have scored a wild pitch two batters later, and the Elks held a 1-0 lead for most of the afternoon as Palms is going to come in to score. We're going to move to the bottom of the sixth. Cardinals break through, bases loaded with nobody out. Bryce Karen gets it past a drawn in infield two run score easily. Then the throw gets away at third, and in comes Sammy Lee to give the Cardinals a 3 1 lead. There you see the throw go away, and Sammy's going to make it a three run cushion. Very had been so strong all game, but the Elks finally get to him in the seventh. Tyler Mossengren doubled down the right field line, put the tying run into scoring position with nobody out. So they bring in Danny Scheller. He's going to come in with the bases loaded, nobody out. He had three strikeouts and also a hit batter and a walk, so it was tied at three. Tommy Dutton. You can see the, the run coming in. Tommy Dutton went four for four against the against Elk River, including a pair of doubles, one in the first and another leading off the seventh. And just like that, winning run was in scoring position. Nice shot from Tommy. A few batters later, the Cardinals are going to walk it off. Literally. Sammy Lee looks at ball four with bases loaded. Dutton's going to come home to give the Cardinals the 4-3 win. And uh, Cardinals can celebrate that home, home uh, opener win with a nice one over Elk River. They followed it up with an extra innings win and talk about getting the job done in extras. The Cardinals put up nine runs in Buffalo on Monday afternoon in the eighth inning to give the Bison absolutely no chance uh, of a comeback. And it was a big win against Elk River. Some questionable calls both ways uh, at the end of that game that really uh, turned the tide. But uh, fortunately for the Cardinals, uh, they had the last lap. Yeah, 19 hits in that game for Coon Rapids as well. So And 11 yeah. against the Elks, uh, yep, so that's 30 yep. hits in the last two games. That's definitely Get the bats uh, going. very good start for the offense. And it's just the start of a long season. The Cardinals are hoping there will be far more ups than downs this spring. The Cardinals return a lot of veterans, and last season left a bad taste in their mouths. They're committed to working together this season to prove themselves as contenders in the conference and in the section. It's just how do we respond to adversity? When things don't go our way, how do we respond? Do we keep the energy up in the dugout? Do we keep pushing and playing for each other? 
Um, I think we struggled with that the last few years. The Cardinals passed the first test in that respect. After a rough opener, they bounced back in game two to score a dramatic walk-off win. That's just how we like the starting point for us. So we want to keep that rolling and that build off of it. Build, we know we'll make mistakes and stuff and just build off of those and then that'll just show us how we go from there. The Cardinals managed just six wins last season and they were held to two or fewer runs in more than half of their games. They know they'll need to be better at the plate if they hope to find more success this spring. I think we just got to help each other out, tell, tell each other what's happening on the mound, what the pitch is throwing, and just have confidence in each other and just have confidence in yourself at the end of the day. It was tough to get any confidence with the way last year went, but the Cardinals did gain a lot of experience. They returned a ton of veterans and they come in a little older, a little wiser, and a lot more committed to making their mark. Well, I think pitching, we got all of our innings back from last year for the most part, um, you know, and just getting getting the top half of our lineup going and then the younger guys filling in towards the bottom. And I think we got a dangerous team here. We just got to keep putting it all together. With such a large senior group, the Cardinals feel like this is their year. They know a lot of teams will look past them, but that just fuels their fire and their need to prove themselves as one of the toughest teams to play in the Northwest Suburban. Yeah, I think we have a lot of confidence going in. We have a ton of seniors this year, so we have a lot of experience. Um, we know, like last year, we, there were some good teams in our conference, and there obviously still are. Um, but again, we, we expect to do well. We're going to have a winning mentality going into every game, and we'll see what happens. Cardinals were scheduled to play against Blaine this afternoon, but that was rained out and pushed to later. They're at Osseo on Thursday this week. They host Tatino Grace on Saturday. And uh, it seems like, you know, we talked about it last year. It was not the season they wanted. No, definitely not. Uh, but they were bringing back almost all of their top hitters and their whole pitching staff. So uh, the cupboard's full. But this is this is an opportunity they have to take advantage of. Yeah, when talking to Coach Bright, you know, he's really optimistic on this season. He thinks that the guys get it. Coach Mossy feels the guys get it. And this is an opportunity to see if they can, you know, finish above 500 for sure. Well, the softball team also started against Centennial last week. And the Cougars, one of the top teams in the Northwest Suburban. The Cardinals had a 2-1 lead uh, in this one until the late innings. But still, losing 3-2 to two to one of the top teams is a good start uh, for a softball team that didn't have a win during the regular season last year. Uh, they bounced back by getting their first win the very next afternoon. And they put up big numbers, beating Totino Grace 11-8. Uh, Olsen went three for four. Meyer Ruddy was two for four, had a home run, first home run of the season for uh, the Cardinals. Anderson got the win on the hill with three and two thirds innings with four hits, three runs. Only one of them earned five walks and one strikeout. They followed it with a, an impressive 8 1 win over Elk River on Thursday. Olsen, again, looking strong. She's the, hitting in the leadoff spot, and that's what you want to see out of your leadoff. Oh, for sure. Uh, hitter. She goes three for three in that one. Ryan Mellum uh, had a nice day at the dish as well. Um, Bauk got the win, went the distance, gave up just three hits. Turned the 8-1 win, so the Cardinals... Uh, at 2-1 and one early on the season. Really nice start for them. We'll see them next week. Well, having some success early in the season is huge for this squad, and their confidence just the start. The Cardinals have a nice blend of veteran leadership and young talent this spring. They're hoping to shake off a disappointing 2023 and make a statement here in 2024. I'm feeling so much better than last year, and I just know it's going to be a good season. The Cardinals didn't win a game until the playoffs last year, and it was extremely tough on the team's mentality. So getting a couple of wins early is huge, and they're hoping it's just the start. Definitely boosts our confidence up early in the season. Um, really helps us just grow forward and grow more. Um, not starting off at a low point really helps us continuously grow, um, build off those wins, and hopefully continue that winning streak that we're on. The Cardinals have a lot of new faces on the field this spring. But they also have a great group of veterans, including three seniors committed to playing college. They just as soon forget last season, but suffering through that schedule did teach them some important lessons. I think we learned that we just need to work harder. You know, we made a lot of mistakes last year that shouldn't have been made. And so we're kind of focusing on just the basics this year and breaking things down, you know. The Cardinals had some key injuries that contributed to their struggles last year. 
something they're hoping to avoid this spring. But the biggest factor may have been the mental strain from their long losing streak, which led to a lot of their defensive mishaps, something else they hope to avoid this year. After you lose a bunch of times in a row, it just like, you lose all confidence in yourself and your team. And this year, I just feel like I don't have to worry about trusting or seeing if a girl's gonna make a play. I know they are. The Cardinals know they'll be the underdog most nights, and they're fine with that. They have a ton of confidence in their dugout, and if opponents overlook them, it may be a huge mistake. Everyone is going to think that, like, we'll drop off at some point, and we just kind of use that to, you know, propel us forward. Like, if we're the underdog every game, we've got nothing to lose, so. The Cardinals feel they're already better than they were last year, not just because of the wins, but because they have the skill, the work ethic, and maybe most importantly, the attitude of a winning team. I think just believing in ourselves and not getting down early will definitely help. So very excited to see what this team can do. You know, you only have four seniors, but three of them have been playing varsity since their freshman year, and all three of them are going on to play at the college level. Which so is it's phenomenal. great to have those kind of leaders uh, at the at the top of your roster, um, and they have the the right attitude. Of course, you know we talk about it. Almost every team has the right attitude at the beginning of the season. Well, let's can hope so. you maintain that positivity through the ups and downs of a season and find a way to get past adversity? That will be the key. So well, far, so good, though. The nice thing is a couple of wins early in the season, 19 runs in the last two games yeah. scored for the Cardinals, and that's really impressive. Yeah, and unfortunately, their game today was rained yes. out. They were really looking forward to getting a chance to go keep at them, uh, keep it former, rolling. former coach uh, Zach Neenaber's yep. playing Bengals, but uh, they'll be back on the field. They have a whole week off now, uh, and they will host Anoka next Tuesday, and we will be there. be there. Yes, we will. Well, the tennis team was the first spring sport to get started, as they frequently are, and they've been very busy the last couple of weeks. Cardinals didn't wade into their schedule either. They dove right in, facing one of the best teams in the conference in their opener, and CTN was there when they hosted the Maple Grove Crimson. Cardinals are a young team, but they're not backing down from anyone. Sophomore Cooper Held played third singles most of last season, but he's made the big jump this year, elevated to number one, and he's showing that he belongs there. He played a strong match against Maple Grove's Oliver Walsh. Held's ground strokes and uh, soft touch were big on several points, and while he lost four to six to one six, he showed that he'll be able to go toe to toe with any team's best player. And he'll, they'll be, he'll be asked to do so night after night. On the next court, Cooper's older brother, Ryder Held, teamed up with fellow senior Blake DeGroote for first doubles and their match with Maple Grove's Edgar Sorday and Nathan Steinison it was a great back and forth battle. After losing the first set three, six, Held and DeGroote won six, three in the second, forced a uh, tie break, which they lost by 10. But again, they were able to prove they can play with anybody in the conference. And uh, that was a big key for, for Coach Storick, too, is that most second sets were better than first sets game one. And it, that trend has continued. Uh, they lost to Blaine in the second game of the year by a 6-1 score. Uh, Ryder Held moved back to singles, played second singles, and got the Cardinals their only win in a tie break. And there you see Austin Hacker. Austin Hacker just joined the the team last year and played mostly uh, like freshman and, and C squad uh, got into the JV lineup at the end of last year and now he's playing third singles uh, and he came up just short losing 14 12 marathon tie break. marathon tiebreaker uh, but there you see again Cooper held you know playing well four six three six in that top spot on Thursday last week, the Cardinals already got their four wins in before the rains came, so that was considered a complete match. Uh, there are your winners. Ryder held at second singles, Austin Hacker at third singles, Will Wagner at fourth singles, and then uh, the second doubles team also getting a win in straight sets, 6-2, six, 6-2. Two, six, two. Over the weekend, they were at St. Catharines for an invitational. It started out against Northwest Suburban Conference full uh, Champlain Park did not go the Cardinals' way as they lost 7-0, but they bounced back with a couple of wins against the private schools, beating Creighton Durham Hall by a 5-2 score, and doing the same against Hill Murray to get their record to 3-3 three three on the year. There's a handful of guys who finished 2-1. and one. Obviously, no one had a perfect weekend since no one won against Chapel Park. For Ryder Help, Austin Hacker and Will Wagner, second, third, and fourth singles, and then DeGroote 
uh, and Herzamaki at first doubles all went two and one on the season. Well, it's nice to even up their record at three Absolutely. and three. Well, this is just the start of a very fast, very intense schedule for the Cardinals tennis squad. This year's team has a huge challenge in front of them. They're coming off one of their best seasons in recent memory, but they're also trying to fill a lot of holes. Early on, they're confident they have the right guys to do it. A lot of kids put the work in. I'm really looking forward to it. We can have a good season. The Cardinals tennis team racked up 18 wins last season, but they also graduated six of the 10 guys that made up their varsity roster most matches. Still, the Cardinals are confident in the group they have and their commitment to improve. Oh, they were definitely better than last year. They were like, they definitely like felt it. They were, didn't have the rust. They were there for the regular season. They had good tryouts, especially the kids that did a lot of hitting. The Cardinals will need that improvement to continue throughout the season. The veterans move to higher spots, and those newer to varsity fill the remaining spots. Some may need to play over their heads in order to compete, but in the end, they believe it will make them all better tennis players. Less skilled players who are just joining have to play higher up because we lost so many people, so they're not exactly on the right level that they're playing on, but I think it'll help them get better. Coach Storick is excited about the group he has and the commitment they've shown early on. He expects the lineup to change, especially early on, as they figure out who's going to work the hardest to earn those varsity spots. It's given more players the opportunity to play in varsity. And when you have that opportunity, who's going to make most of it? The Cardinals Conference and section includes some of the best teams in the state, so it'll be crucial for the guys not to get discouraged and remember the importance of enjoying the game. If you let your negative emotions take over you, you're not, you're not having fun, you're not going to play well because you just, you just want to be done with it. So you'll have to find a way to stay in a happy mood or just push everything to the side. The season will be a grind and will undoubtedly have its ups and downs. But the Cardinals are confident they have a group with the skills, commitment, and most importantly, character to make it a great year. It's, it's a great group of guys and, you know, it's, it's, it's an honor to represent Coon Rapids. Cardinals also uh, were scheduled to be going up against Anoka today. That's been pushed back, yep. but they will be at Park Center on Friday, and then they host a tournament on Saturday, so they stay very, very busy. The track teams have had a couple of events, not much that has been timed, but uh, from what I've heard from both coaches, very excited about what they've seen so far. Uh, just last week, they did have a tri-meet with a couple of other Northwest Suburban teams. Uh, they obviously kept their times, but did not score the meet. And they said, you know, we, we did pretty well. We're, we're pretty happy with where we are to start the season. Uh, I did get some results from Coach uh, Sullivan for a Mankato State relay uh, that was held back on the fifth. Uh, and a couple of just things to note, the shot put relay uh, of Dennis, Peterson, Wittenden, and Skillings was the first place uh, shot put team, the four by four. Not only were they first place, but they set a meet record. And Kaijan Cummings Coleman was second place with a school record time in the 60 yard dash. He's a pretty good athlete. There's no question. But this, and these, this, this track team is, is chock full of good athletes. Yeah, too, so. yeah absolutely. And yeah, he, he, he's, he's kind of fast. Kind of fast. Yeah, I saw him today. He was uh, pretty excited uh, about the fact that he's uh, the track the track season is underway and pretty pretty excited to keep it going. Yeah, the track teams were were scheduled to have a quad meet at Maple Grove today. That also has been postponed. Uh, they will be at the Osseo Invite on Thursday. Uh, golf teams able to get their seasons started last week. The boys team uh, started with a, a head to head match against Minnehaha Academy and uh, they won in a laffer. Uh, oh. They didn't even keep a score for Minnehaha. It was that far off, but a good start for the Cardinals. Four guys starting with 87s. Not the best scores, no, but, but to get that much consistency, that's especially the thing. Uh, at the start. And I know that uh, in years past, it's it's been a struggle to get more than two or even three guys to get into the 80s by the end of the season. So to have them start there is phenomenal. They put up a 348. They got the win against Minnehaha Academy. And then on it was a Thursday last week, yeah, they, they had the uh, Bunker Hills Invitational, a 30 
team tournament. It's one of the biggest tournaments in the state of Minnesota that they host year after year. And there you see it. Those scores getting better. Noah Law, a 77. Oscar Berg, a 79. Dylan Bushy, an 84. Tyler Barzness, also an 84. Gavin DeVries, an 87. Got to like having those hockey guys in the lineup <laughs> and uh, hitting well. Uh, they will be at North Fork for the first Northwest Suburban Conference meet of the year on Thursday. Uh, the Northwest Suburban Conference will then be at Baker next Monday. Always interesting with the boys playing uh, conference tournaments yep. week after week, the girls playing head-to-head -head matches. Well, exactly, and, and as you know, because of the amount of times it, it took you to get through the windmill hole, that <laughs> golf is a tough game, and, and it, you know, it and is. it really goes, and you've got, you've got to keep your head about you because you know, one shot can get into you, and then your whole game is going up. But so you see 487s, the consistency from those and guys And two guys is getting great. into the 70s yep, in, in the second event of the yep. year. That's the big thing. If they can get four guys into the 70s, they will most certainly move up in the Agreed. conference rankings. Uh, girls golf team got its season started with the Shamrock Invitational last week, and they put up a 424, finished eighth place out of 11 teams. Lily McKenzie was the leader for the Cardinals, finished 25th place with a 101. Sophia Meyer just one stroke and one place behind her. Semensky finished with a 108. Kelly a 113 and Davis a 114. Um, and interesting to see their scores because, uh, again, they play head-to-head -head and they only play nine holes for most of their right. events all year. So uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, if if their scores improve dramatically because they're only playing those nine holes because that second nine uh, can really be taxing both physically and mentally. Yes, it can. Uh, Cardinals will have their first head-to-head -head Northwest Suburban Conference match, or we're supposed to today against Anoka. Uh, that also has been postponed. They will host Blaine on Thursday over at the Gem of Coon Rapids. Bunker Hills. Uh, boys volleyball team, uh, we're going to get to see a little bit later this week. We'll talk to the, talk about that in our upcoming schedule. Boys lacrosse team started its season uh, last night on the road against Andover. Not a great start, but not terrible. They lost to the Huskies by a 9-3 score. Uh, they will be at Anoka on Wednesday. And Howie? We'll be there. And they will be at Tatino Grace on Friday. The girls lacrosse team opened its season at home on Monday night with a Cardinal alum taking over behind the bench. Paige Fosslett takes over the program, hoping to get them turned around after a winless season last spring. And they faced one of the best teams around in game one, the Andover Huskies. Cardinals came into the game with a lot of optimism and energy, but the Huskies quickly took complete control. They owned the ball in the opening quarter, got themselves out to a big lead. Ella Thorson's goal gave Andover a 2-0 lead, less than four minutes in. They were just getting started. The Huskies had five goals in the first period from five different players. Merrill Delich beats Edie Lensmeyer alone out front, Andover cruising. Cardinals able to get on the board with a free position early in the second, Katie Wiggins. Shoots high, keeper got a piece, but couldn't keep it in front of her. We get another free position midway through the second. Ashley Flynn leaves no doubt her first of the season, but it was 10-2 at that point. Cardinals get one more in the fourth. Wiggins' initial shot is stopped, but she sticks with it, scoops and scores. Cardinals lost 14-3. They only scored three or more goals in two games all of last year so not a bad start to no. get three against a very very good Andover team. Well yeah obviously you and I were doing the game last night and, and we talked about the whole game the passing of Andover they just did a really nice job of controlling it down in the Cardinal end um, and, and this dominated play I talked to coach Foslin today and I said yeah, I thought you guys played a better second half than you Absolutely. did in the first half I thought you made some adjustments especially defensively and she agreed and she goes we have a ways to go but Andover is pretty good but you know that's that's some positive things you take out of that one yeah and, and as we talk about everybody it's it's easier to be positive at the beginning of the season we're certainly hoping that they can uh, break through get a win early in the year there at Champlin on Wednesday and then at Duluth uh, a week from or next Monday rather um, and they have back-to-back -back, uh, road games up north uh, later next week as well uh, but uh, you know very excited both both lacrosse teams have new coaches this year as we talked about Paige Fosslin is a uh, 2018 Cardinal alum but for more on this year's lacrosse teams uh, we recruited some expert help and we bring in the intrepid reporter 
Jerry Grant. <laughs> Jerry, so glad to have you as part of Sports Night. And uh, what did you find out? Well, thanks a lot, Joe. I had a chance to talk with both the boys and the girls lacrosse teams last week. And both teams have a lot of optimism, which we've talked about. A lot of teams have that to begin the year. But I saw the coaches really into coaching these kids up and trying to get them to move to another level this year. Let's take a look at what I found. Yeah, I'm just, I'm really excited for this season. Should be a blast. Um, I'm excited to grow the sport. There's a lot of new kids, there's a lot of new faces. The boys lacrosse team hopes to break through in more close games this year to have an improved season. Winning is important, yet coach Chris Tott says there is more to this year's team experience. I love to win, um, but that's not my sole focus. I think if the, if the players aren't having fun, um, it's really tough to keep them invested for the whole season. So that is actually my number one goal for them this year is for them to have fun day in and day out, um, enjoy each other, enjoy us as coaches, uh, and really have a good time. You know, obviously we want to win and our focus is to try to be competitive and have success on the field. Um, but really having the boys enjoy the season and building their skills and learning the game and taking something away from it is really my number one goal. Captains Nolan Hazelwood and Tommy Scramstead commented on this cultural philosophy. The culture we hope to get is, you know, teammates that we, you know, would like battle for each other. We, we always want to be able to have each other's backs and with that we want to have passion towards our team and passion towards winning, passion towards getting that overall success this year. And I feel like it benefits us as a team just um, you, can, you can voice your opinion and you're heard. And that's, a, that's a great thing. Tweaking the style of play ties into this shift in culture. We're kind of a off-ball movement team so we want to we move the ball we want to move without the ball, getting open for, for passes and getting the ball moving quick so we can get quick opportunities. Yeah, so far in practice, we're working on a lot of the little things, a lot of the stuff we made mistakes on already in the past. So we're trying to figure out what we made mistakes on, what to improve on this year, and we feel that would make us so that we're the successful team we need to be. Constantly going, no stopping, and see where the chips fall at the end of the game. When it comes right down to it, this team hopes friendship and concern for each other will pay dividends. Uh, the most enjoyable thing is just coming to the field, getting better with, with the, like, just friends. I mean, we're from different schools, but it's, it's hard to tell. I think we're from, we consider ourselves from one school. I think I got into coaching a long time ago, and, and the reason is because I love this sport. Um, but I also love working with these young men. You know, I think seeing them grow and mature and then go off to their adult lives is, is, is really why I do this. And so taking those experiences with these guys and seeing them grow and then go off. Like I said, we have a big senior class. Um, so seeing how they get ready for the next phase of their life is, is really cool. Seniors add the backbone to any team and its success. The Catbirds hope they can look down from the Catbird seat for much of this season. This year we got a lot of new kids and I like that. I mean, you definitely work with that. We got a lot of athletes this year. So you can you can teach a, you can't teach a kid athleticism, but you can teach them how to pass and catch. Last year, our biggest struggle was just finishing out games. We could we could compete with teams well, we could uh, score well, we could play defense well. We just couldn't actually finish out the game. So the biggest thing this year is we need to finish out, play all four quarters, and and score and don't get scored on. And I think we're going to surprise some people. I think we're going to be better than we were last year, and and I'm looking forward to it. Lacrosse preview. First year head coach Paige Foslin has a positive feeling for this year's girls lacrosse team. They have come a long way since last summer and she hopes the hard work pays off. I get a good feeling because they work hard, they want to know what it's like to compete, what it's like to win. And I'm just hoping that I can give them the tools to do so. This good feeling has not been lost on the captain. It's been going really good. A lot of players have been improving, um, even myself, you know, going to college next year for lacrosse. So, um, you know, I think there's been a lot of change with every girl. So. Boslin's coaching approach is resonating with the players. Definitely the intensity has increased. I think it's going to increase the game speed so we can keep up with better teams easier. Our goal, my goal, is just better than yesterday. Um, better than last year, better than our last game, better than our last practice. Always get better. She's definitely more like 
active, you know, hustling more, trying harder, going hard all the time, and you know, no more slowing down. We gotta go game pace all the time. I think it's good. Um, definitely a different like style of coaching and more like aggression and more conditioning and stuff. So it'll be good. Another good thing is Boslin's lacrosse and coaching experiences. I've been in their shoes, <laughs> um, but I feel. I've been coaching volleyball ninth grade since four years now. Um, I care about the community, I care about the school, um, and all I want to do is see the girls succeed, so that's why I'm here. The team has turned the page on last year and is ready for this season. There's a really good group of girls, you know, all the underclassmen look up to all the captains, all the older girls, so I think it's a really fun team. Uh, we have a lot of new players this year, so maybe getting that connection down to lacrosse and to our new teammates. I would say everyone needs to have 100% commitment. Everyone needs to be all in for it. And we need to work as a team to get there. It's what we want. We need to meet our goals and just keep setting our goals every day. The new day for Cardinal Girls Lacrosse is here and the players and coaches are excited. For Boslin, it will be both a step back in time and movement forward. When we're walking out onto the field, I'm gonna be thinking, oh, years ago this was me <laughs> but really I hope they're thinking I'm hoping we're thinking we're ready we prepared for this and I want them to believe in themselves as much as we as a coaching staff believe in them too. Well, I'm very excited for this season it's been a long time coming and we're ready it'll be interesting to see where these two teams are at and about the halfway point of the season Joe and Howie yeah, absolutely. I, we're hopeful and definitely thankful for you to for for getting out there and previewing. Uh, Jerry will be back with us in a couple of weeks uh, previewing the golf teams. Uh, we'll have uh, hopefully the the track previews next week on Sports Night. Here's what we have coming up for you on CTN. Boys lacrosse at Anoka on Wednesday. Boys volleyball against Maple Grove on Thursday. We get our first look at the softball team in action next Tuesday when they host the Anoka Tornadoes. That's going to do it for this edition of Sports Night. I want to thank everybody out there for joining us and continuing to support everything we do here at CTN. For the entire crew, including the press, Professor Jerry Grant and my sidekick, Howie Shapiro. I'm Joe Young. Say goodnight.